Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman, and uh, our next guest in the studio today is Amy Silva Rigtrup uh, of Silva Faria Funeral Homes. Amy, welcome. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for having me. Well, it's nice to have you here, and congratulations to you, Amy, on being the recipient of 2015 Outstanding Women of Family Business Award. Thank you. It's really an honor. And and to, to see also that you are a fifth-generation funeral director. Yes. we. Uh, my family's funeral home actually opened in 1890. Um, there was a need that my great-great-grandfather saw for um, Portuguese families to be served with with dignity and from someone that kind of understands their culture. And there really wasn't that chance, you know, at the time in, in the late 1800s. He was selling insurance for Prudential. Oh, wow. Because he could speak Portuguese and English really well. So he was like Uncle Insurance, as everyone called him. So he ended up helping all these families, not only with insurance policies, with like translation and understanding what they're signing away for, but he would also assist them in the in getting their death claims. Mm. And in doing that, he was like, you know, I could kind of just be helping them with the whole funeral With the funeral situation. arrangement. And so he decided to open his business by simply putting a sign outside of his house on the shingles. I'm an undertaker. Mm. And that's where it started. And five and generations later, we're still going. And I would imagine f uh, five generations ago versus today, the regulation in your industry has changed dramatically. Oh, yes. And, uh, oh, yes. You know, procedures and things of that nature. So like funeral homes, he, he didn't even have to become licensed. And he, he's like one of the first 50 licensed funeral directors in the state. Oh, wow. So and, and today, obviously, a lot of uh, oversight and licensure requirements and you know, yes. you still hear horror stories about people's families not taken care of with dignity, et cetera, which is a shame. But it goes it on is. in any, it, probably any industry out there. It really does. Or, it really does. I mean, it's just like kind of the restaurant injury, uh, mm. industry, excuse me. No pun um, intended like a injury, right. A burger's a burger, but there's a big difference, not just in price, between a McDonald's burger and something from like Ruth's Chris. I mean, you're paying for the care that they put in the ingredients all the way through what they put into actually making the food. It's still a burger, but that's what kind of changes. Absolutely. So I have to ask this question. Was this, uh, were you destined to the industry and the business growing up? Uh, you know, I, kn I, I know personally several people uh, that grew up in, in, the, in the industry, family uh, members, and, um, you know, saw their, their destiny. And so obviously you've, uh, coming from the fourth generation to the fifth generation, uh, was it something that you grew up thinking, this is what I want to do? I'm, I'm sure you spent a lot of time around, yes. around the funeral home. I definitely did. I grew up in the building. So I, I grew up as a child kind of just understanding the business is what it was. I kind of, at a really young age, thought that everyone lived in a funeral home. Like, this is totally <laughs> normal. It's not until you meet other kids that say, that's weird, <laughs> that you realize it's weird. It was totally all normal to me, and everything was explained and talked about with respect. And I assumed that they expected me to become a funeral director, but I went the route of like ballet, theater, free spirit into like hippie after high school. And I decided I didn't really know what I wanted to do yet. So I'm going to not waste your money and go to college yet. I'm going to go make money and travel and have fun and figure it out. And it wasn't until I kind of stepped back and life handed me a situation where I was able to um, be grieving for someone that was very close to me at an older age and be able to really see the amazingness of my father and what he was able to do for my friend's family, knowing that he was grieving just as much as I was. Mm -hmm. He was like running the show. He was guiding everybody through this like fog of overwhelming stress and sadness and still really, really scared himself. This was one of the first deaths of someone his own age. Mm. And I, I just kind of clicked at that moment and saw like, the profound importance of what we do for the people that we serve. And it turned into not being something that I'm expected to do. It, it turned into something I, I started courting. And I took uh, death and dying classes and courses at BCC, and that solidified um, my relationship. And I absolutely fell in love with what we do as funeral directors. And that made me go towards college. And, and I can say definitely going into a college program, knowing 100% what you want to do completely changes everything. Yeah, I would imagine. And not, not, not that many uh, young people have that opportunity. They don't. Yeah. They don't. And, and there is something to be said for the amazing schools out there that kind of present people with anything they want to try out. I just knew at a young age that I, I wanted to wait until I knew first. And, and I'm kind of glad my crazy, free-spirited road led me there because a lot of my theater and my 
open-mindedness has kind of helped in what I've incorporated into how I serve families um, mm. as far as compassion and, and not um, – you can't really be a funeral director and try to impose anything that you think or feel into a family that's grieving. You kind of have to adapt yourself to what they need, be open to how they look at the world, and, and that, that really helps.